You all can hear me? Yes. Good? Okay, great. Uh, I'm not a scientist, I'm an attorney. I'm trained in uh, all types of remote viewing, uh, psychic detective work, trained, trained mediumship and all that. I made a terrible mistake before I came here. I decided to ask a bunch of scientists that I was working with on the West Coast what they thought of this presentation. They had violently opposing points of view. And then they said, the only thing you gotta do, if you wanna talk to scientists, you gotta tell them a joke. And I said, I don't know any jokes. And they said, well, tell one about a scientist and attorney. I, I did a whole bunch of research on that. And you know, to a scientist and attorney walk into a bar or a laboratory or whatever, I don't have time to tell you the joke. So now that you're sufficiently warmed up, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna keep going, because I don't have much time. So I will try to uh, talk about the consilience of a type of remote viewing that I've been developing over the last decade called TSP and synchronicities. That is, if I still understand the word and the meaning of the word consilience after uh, the last day or two. And uh, why is that flipping? And uh, the word, uh, meaning of synchronicities. At any rate, those of you, I'm assuming all of you pretty much familiar with remote viewing, those of you who are not, basically I define it as clairvoyance with protocols. If you're perceiving something that is uh, distant in terms of space or time, and if you are not following certain protocols, these are rules, steps, phases, and whatever, that you have to do and you have to insert your clairvoyance into those rules, then you are, why? I didn't touch it. This has been happening to me a lot recently, actually. Um, then you're not doing remote viewing. So uh, I developed TSP uh, because I was dissatisfied with certain uh, aspects of remote viewing that have been developed over the last oh, half century. And uh, I needed something that was better suited to my clients. So, and in particular, I don't have time to talk about all the different types of proto protocols, but basically, TSP is generally, but not always, uh, a completely blind target. Uh, the targets are clients, questions, and or photos. It could be either or, neither, or both. So you can end up blind sometimes. Um, and these are the protocols that I've put up here on the screen. And you can see basically what I'm doing is you, you receive the client's questions or the, or the photos. The viewer then does what I call an advanced reading before ever speaking with the client. And it's all fully documented, written down, whatever. And then the viewer gets in touch with the client and then uh, has a feedback session. And you get, you sort of put together your, your scoring, your hits and your misses. What I do in TSP, which I've not seen done in any other type of remote viewing, and I really don't understand why, because uh, to me it seems obvious, is I have added in the element of synchronicities. And uh, I have included that in my scoring system, which I've developed to be uh, a little bit more reflective of uncanny data, things that are not just ordinary basic hits or misses, because if you are doing your normal type of remote viewing, if you say, well, I see uh, a man wearing a white coat and he's doing surgery, if you get, you know, man, you break it up in the smallest possible units, man, white, coat, surgery, whatever, they, you may or may not have actually been onto the target. That's moving by itself. Um, so, all right, so, um, so I've added in a, uh, a more subtly weighted system going from the ordinary types of hits to things that are more uncanny, precise types of hits. They're just weird, but they're rather accurate and then into the next category of synchronicities, which are weird, uncanny things that actually cause physical events. So this up here is just basically, um, that's the timeline just to show you. The start of a TSP session starts when you receive the client's uh, target questions, you do your advanced reading, you get your client feedback session, and then you may have several, and once it's ended, it's ended. So to give you an example, all right, so you can understand this type of scoring, this is an actual case that I uh, worked on with a client. The client uh, uh, gave me three target questions, and basically it involved, uh, he'd been in an auto accident two years prior, he'd, uh, the attorney had gotten the settlement proceeds, was refusing to turn them over, um, and was refusing to talk to the client or pick up the phone for two years. 
So the client wanted to know what did I see regarding his attorney and what could he do to stop ruminating over his situation? And I don't recall there being any other data on this particular case. Anyway, so what I would call uh, on an ordinary type of a hit, okay, that the attorney had reneged on his initial fee agreement, that a truck was involved in the accident, that the client had suffered a concussion. Now, all of this was pre-written before I speak with the client. It's all documented. Everything is meticulously documented, by the way. And I've got 10 years, you know, more than 400 documented cases of these things. Um, so those are ordinary hits. A little bit more uncanny, that goes into the realm of, I said, the attorney has a whimsical, quote, item on his desk, an artifact that is like a toy, unquote. That turned out to be accurate. I said, the attorney has dark brown hair and thick eyebrows. That turned out to be accurate. That's more uh, like you're seeing something. You're there. It's a little peculiar that you're getting that much precision. Finally, and this is one of the best synchronicities that I've had uh, involved in one of the TSP cases, um, I'm on the phone with the client during the, the uh, client feedback session, and the, um, we're talking, and all of a sudden a woman picks up the phone. She says, hello, and the client says, hello, who's this? And I'm thinking, There's, he, there must be a woman in the house. She's picked up the other line. Turns out there was no woman in the house. He's alone. He only has one phone line. He does not know how to conference call and doesn't have that ability anyway, and um, there's absolutely no reason for this to this person to be on this telephone call. Uh, and so she says, he says, well, who's this? She said, no, who's this? You called me. And he said, I did not. I'm on the phone with somebody else right now. How'd you get on my, my telephone call? He said, well, I don't know. And they got a little irritated. Turns out that was the paralegal for the attorney's office. She thought he had called her. He had not, because he'd been on the phone with me the whole time, he hadn't touched the phone. So that was a little odd. And the next day, he gets a call from the attorney's uh, office manager saying that she's just put the check in the mail for the entire settlement proceeds. That's a good synchronicity. <laughs> so, OK, so the problem is when you are um, trying to recognize the synchronicity, how do you recognize it in order to put it into a scoring system? And, and that I thought was going to be an easy thing. Turns out it's really not. So you have to go back to the basics, which is you go back to Jung who, uh, I mean, Jung, he coined the term, and he spent a good 50 years of his professional career really wrestling with this concept of what is a synchronicity, which I now understand why he was wrestling with it. Um, he came up with a bunch of different uh, definitions. Uh, the most common one is a meaningful coincidence. Most of us heard that. I thought, uh, you know, that's easy. It, no, it's not. He came, uh, a causal parallelism. Well, that's sort of not, should be easy. No, not really. What I learned uh, is that he actually was very inspired by a lot of uh, J.B. Ryan's uh, predictive work and the I Ching and all of that. But, but what inspired him in terms of the synchronicities was this relationship between the mind and a future event, always going forward. So I think you can break down you know, different types of causality here, uh, three different ways. Ca you have your normal causality in for synchronicity involving two events that are linked together, or as, as Jung would have said, there, there's a falling together in time of two uh, events caused by an objective known force or field. And he was desperate to find a force or field, and he couldn't with any of the known forces. So the other option is they're totally random events. Two events, they have no objective uh, links, no force or field, and no subjective links. Finally, you have what Jung, it was sort of his hybrid causality, I guess, of a causality. So you have two events, they have no objective link, they seem to be having this falling together in time that you can't explain, but Jung said, well, they're, they're linked, it's a synchronicity because they're meaningful. Well. For me, that's where there's all kinds of problems uh, because they're meaningful to who? I mean, you know the famous story about the, the, the client who had the dream about the scarab beetle and he goes to the window and there's a scaraboid beetle or something that, that flies in. Well, that was meaningful to Jung. Was it meaningful to the client? Uh, we don't know. And, and is that a synchronicity? Who does that have to be meaningful to? Also, if you're looking, he doesn't give a time frame. Falling together when? For how long? To who? So uh, a lot of you know about the, like, the interesting links between President Ford and President Lincoln. I mean, there are all kinds of fascinating parallels. 
But are those true synchronicities? They happened a long time ago. Plus, you can retrofit in order to, you can cherry pick. Well, that, that event sort of fits with this one, because now I know what they both are, and now I think they're both meaningful. So I have a big problem with that. So what I did is I created sort of a mini subset of a synchronicity that I call a TSP synchronicity. And I created it so that at least has an, a couple of objective things that you can look at so you can analyze it within the context of a TSP uh, session. And so if you look at it sort of like it's, you're looking at a, a synchronicity under a microscope or in a Petri dish, three requirements. One, you need two events. Second, they have to occur during this TSP time period from the time when the client first sends their target uh, information to the time of the last session. And three, the synchronicity can be identified by the client, the viewer, or both. Of those two events, and this is sort of critical to understand this, one of them is always going to be the viewer's advanced reading which means it's always going to be documented. It's time-stamped as an actual event, not a retroactive retrofitting of meaning. OK? So that's very important. And I use that to sort of document present time, as you'll see, within the context of a TSP session. Um, the other thing that the advanced reading does is it sets the theme for whatever synchronicities are going to be occurring in the TSP time period. So now you're not dealing with again, retrofitting somebody's meaningfulness, you have a theme, and it's been written down in advance before you ever know about the synchronicities that are going to be within that session. So I'll give you uh, some examples. Now, what's interesting is, and I'm going to show you this in a bit, these synchronicities occur before, during, and after the advanced reading. In advanced reading, I'm considering present time. So to give you an example of synchronicity that occurs uh, before the advanced reading, I had told a client, her, she had a question about uh, whether she'd get a job or something like that. And I said, well, I see that you, or I wrote this down. You're, uh, this, uh, I see a job that's in the nor it's northwest section of the city, the urban center that you're in. It's 20 minutes away. So we have our client session. I learned from her that just prior to my advanced reading time, she, that's, she'd gotten a job offer northwest of her city, 20 minutes away. An example of something that occurs during or concurrent with the writing the advance reading, I'll give you another example. Um, this was a client, he only wanted to know about business and, and finance, okay? So I did all that, and at the very end I had drawn a sketch of a railroad uh, bridge with arches and tracks, and there's a railroad, go a, a train going over the top of it. And I said, look, I'm really sorry, I don't think this relates to business or finances, I mean, does this mean anything at all? Do you have any? And he smiles and he reaches over on his desk, because we're Skyping, and he pulls up a, the same picture. And he says, yeah, I was just remote viewing for this other group that I do, and this is what I just drew. This is it. And it was exactly the same thing. <coughs> Give you an example of a, of a synchronicity that occurs after the advanced reading. So in this case, uh, I had a client, she wanted to know what had happened, she, it was a suspicious death of a relative of hers who was a pilot. So I said, oh, listen, all I get is a, it's like a chili pepper. And I'm interpreting that as it, it's somehow related to uh, a Central American country. Does, I said, does that mean anything at all to you? She said, well, could it be Nicaragua? I said, yeah, sure, that's in Central America. We finish, within a couple hours on my LinkedIn, I get a LinkedIn friend request from somebody who says they are a CIA operative and an advisor to the president of Nicaragua. Okay, so a causality. So you have sort of two different types now. Jung's, which is linked by subjective feeling of meaningfulness. Mine, which is TSP, a causality linked with some objective components. Now you have a limited time period, so you can really examine it, and you've got a predetermined theme. So I'm gonna give you the, exam the uh, results of um, the sample group of synchronicities. All right, so this is uh, from 1917 to the beginning of 2000, oh no, whoa, 2000, 
2017 to the beginning of 2019. 70 cases, all right? I was a viewer in all 70 cases, 64% female, 36% male, virtually all of them American, a uh, wide range of professions, anything from astrologer, lawyer, real estate, government, TV producer, and so on. The client target questions tend to relate, or tend to be five main categories. First is psychic uh, or practical type of advice that they're seeking, or medical intuitive, mediumship, ufology, or paranormal questions. Of those 70, 18 of them had synchronicities. That's 26%. That's a lot. So now we have a way to gauge the, the relationship between the two, okay? And gender is roughly uh, goes down to about the same. There were actually 27 synchronicities because some of the clients experienced more than one. Uh, the highest number was three, nobody got four, and the average TSP time period in which to judge whether there were gonna be any synchronicities was 26 days. So what does that TSP sample group reveal about TSP synchronicities? I made graphs for you guys, because I figure you guys like graphs. Um, so I have the, the horizontal line is all the 18 clients. Each bar represents a synchronicity. Some of them have more than one. Uh, that's more than one synchronicity. Um, and the, if you, well, you can see past, present. The present is marked by the number two, and then you go up to the top vertically, and that's where the session ends. Total of 27 synchronicities, 12 of them in the future, nine in the past, six concurrent or present. Now, this diagram I happen to love. Nobody else likes this, but I think it's a dual causality diagram. The two ways to look at it, okay? One of them would be your typical uh, concept of linear time, going from past, present, and future. Those yellow dots represent the present time of the advanced reading. The blue dots represent the other synchronistic event. So you can sort of see how they're falling all over the place. Um, and it, it creates a problem if you're looking for a force or a field that's going to be, for example, uh, well, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to play with it. Uh, one of the blue dots in the past, does that cause the advanced reading or does the advanced reading cause it? And so you start, if you're looking at linear sequential time, you clearly have a problem with that. If you look at this like it's an orange and you're looking down on top of it, as if you're looking at great time, okay, concurrent time, all time exists together and all you got to do is access it, then what you, you have a different perspective. Now you're looking at events that are not causally related, they are related related. And why are they related? Well, you may have set something up. You don't know particularly which thing has been the, whether it's been the intentional focus or what it's been. Summary. High number of synchronicities in TSP remote viewing, 26%. Two, uh, TSP synchronistic events occur before, during, and after the advanced reading predictions are already written, and of course, I don't know about the synchronicities until much later. And finally, TSP uh, remote viewing accuracy is supported by actual synchronistic events without relying on a subjective sense of meaningfulness or a limitless time frame. So thanks very much. And I, I may write something this up. If any of you are interested, my website is theskepticalpsychic.com. Um, I have some books for sale out there. And I think that was it. So thanks very much. Okay, we do have a few minutes for questions. Uh, when you um, remote view the future, um, are you imagining that, there, that the future is a fixed, determined target, or more like what I would be inclined to think that you're remote viewing various future possibilities, but that any agents present in the scenario that have a degree of free will would be wildcard variables that might collapse one future possibility into actuality while keeping others unmanifest. So therefore, it'd be sort of intrinsically unreliable based on that. I'm wondering which of those models or, if, or some other one that you view when you're doing clairvoyant uh, remote viewing. Yeah, well, I'm not sure that I'm particularly looking at a future unless I'm being asked to do that, in which case I'm just going there. Um, but I'm not, I'm not purposely moving myself forwards or backwards or being worried about, you know, what are going to be any intervening events. And particularly for these synchronicities, I'm not going to a future. I'm simply not going there. It, the future is just happening along with it or a falling together in time with it. Okay. 
just a comment, really. Um, just a comment, really. Uh, interesting uh, talk. I suggest you take a look at the, uh, go to academia.edu, search on my name and archaeology papers particularly, and look at the Mobius Consensus Protocol because you may find some things that you find useful in what you're doing. Cool, like what? Do you want me to talk about that? Just one or two. If you had a particular thought about something that might be well, there's an to this. there is a a much more detailed. I don't want to be critical. There's a much more detailed way of evaluating the accuracy of what you're saying. Okay, I'll take a look. Okay. So I'm interested actually in some of your locution. Where you using the word reading? A lot, and of course, that's fairly non-standard usage in remote viewing. We don't talk about reading so much as we talk about perceptions, impressions, experiencing that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and it strikes me—I don't know—maybe is this more of a hybrid between remote viewing and your your kind of standard psychic practice that uh, that people who, who are psychic but aren't remote viewers engage in? It seems to be a little bit of what's going on here. And is that maybe why you're using the term reading so much? I use the root, that's from whence I come. I mean, uh -huh. I, I was apprenticed for 10 years as a psychic detective, and I do all types of, of what you would call psychic readings. I'm, but I'm also trained in, in controlled remote viewing, associated remote viewing, extended remote viewing. I know all of that stuff, too. Um, this is a form of a hybrid, and I did it on purpose because I was not getting what I needed in terms of both data and, and client satisfaction. I don't have the, the luxury or the benefit of having 17 intelligence agencies as my clients or, or whatever. I just don't have it. I'm dealing with individuals who, if you tell them that something is you know, uh, red and kind of mushy or soft and, and uh, you know, it speaks, whatever, they're going to say, huh? Well, you, I need some. I need something. So what you're saying is your approach is more stream of consciousness than standard remote viewing is. Is that what you're suggesting? No, I, I think I don't see a difference. Well, I, I've, I how, how you just described remote viewing, of course, is you know low-level remote viewing where you're talking about direct sensory types of impressions, right? Right. Um, but what you're talking about here is actually more contextual. You have a, a, a lot of uh, verbal description that that remote viewing approaches that from a different way. So that's right. probably the hybrid element here that you're talking about. I am extreme, and this, you know, I didn't have time to explain all the different protocols mm -hmm. that I have developed, but they're all very integrated with each other. And um, yes, I think it's. I think there. For example, I don't think you have to. You can go in partially front loaded because I think you can, you know, get by various problems of uh, ana analytic overlay of that kind of stuff. Um, and I think that you can put together complex concepts for people mm -hmm. as opposed to breaking them all apart. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. And I'm I sorry, but I think we need to <laughs> cut this debate you short. Can tell by your look that we were out of time. <laughs> and so let's thank our speaker again. Thank you.